But rear screen time, a big mistake I made on the first one, on the front screen, I didn't put, I only put a uh, fairy liquid in here. Love you. Didn't put it anywhere around here, I didn't put it in there. Uh, so I really struggled. Um, so <coughs> I'll make sure I do that this time. Sorry, the uh, time is 13.20. Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back to part 31 of the Project ERA build. And I've mentioned this before, Mark is a tad competitive. It's not a race to fit the rear windscreen, but everything's a race with Mark, so he's racing against himself here. I thought I'd just mention quickly, Mark's using uh, Ferry Liquid, washing up liquid to put the windscreen rubber back in. I prefer to use car shampoo, it's just Ferry Liquid can dry out the seals if you leave it on there, but to be honest, this car will get washed and that Ferry Liquid will be washed away, so I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. 1.31 What was that, 11 minutes then? That's not bad going that, well done Mark. Right, next job, I'm going to clean underneath the, uh, the underside in the tunnel, uh, put some um, wax oil stuff on, put the gear and the rod change bit in, try and get that seal on, um, so then I can then get the exhaust on when it comes, or the rest of it comes, um, and think that's it under, underneath, so yeah, let's get it on. Uh, yeah, so sorry, um, I, feel, I did fully upgrade that, or uh, uh, blasted it, I'm just going to spray some of that uh, wax oil stuff all over it, uh, I've put grease in there, new cotton reels. Uh, and I have ordered a new switch just in case that don't work. Um, I'm sure it does, but just to be on the safe side. Good thinking with the reverse light switch, Mark. I was going to say you must have watched the Project Sprout video where my reverse light switch doesn't work, but that only went up this evening and Mark filmed this probably about two or three weeks ago. So yeah, good call there. Obviously these bits underneath the car are a bit of a pain to do now, crawling around underneath on your hands and knees or, or on your back. Um, as you see, Mark has a lift on the left hand side, just on the left hand side of the screen there, which bolt is sitting on at the moment. So you might think it'd be ideal to get it on there to do these underneath bits, and it probably would. It's just moving the car around. so. It's got most of its running gear in it now, but it's not on all four wheels. So there's maybe some jobs that maybe Mark could have left until after and then done it while it's on the ramp. But to be honest, even then it's a bit of a struggle. The ramp is a scissor type lift. So access underneath is a little bit restricted. It's not like a two poster lift where you have, you know, lots of room underneath the ramp. Uh, been hunting high and low for a, another Clevis pin. Uh, for some reason, I got the wrong size, and they only sent one with the order, so I so to use a sturdy bolt for now. Um, yeah, nightmare. I ain't spared either. For once, I'm surprised Mark does not have a spare Clevis pin. He tends to order things in bulk, and I often joke, I'm sure he's got enough spares and bits left over to build a whole mini out of spare parts in his workshop. Right, that handbrake was a pain in the backside. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it on your own. It's uh, probably taken me two hours to do it. 
So uh, now I'm just going to put some silent coat on the bits that Keith uh, has recommended uh, on the tow board, inner wings, uh, inside the uh, bins, on the back seat. So it's only little bits, but it every little helps, as uh, Tesco say. So we've talked about silent coat in the previous episodes on this build and on uh, Project Sprout as well. It's a great addition, silent coat. It is only one stage of soundproofing or sound deadening though. It's just there to stop drumming, vibration noises on large flat metal panels. So um, I'd seen where Mark put the silent coat and just suggested he put it in a couple of other areas as well, which was the inner wings, tow board, back of the seat, anywhere that's a large flat uh, metal panel will you will get drumming noises and you will get vibration and that's what the silent coat is there to do and as you'd have seen on Project Sprout you can put other layers of noise insulation over the silent coat as well so it's, you should use something as well as silent coat most sort of standard carpets will have uh, soundproofing built into the underneath of the carpet or you'll have a layer of soundproofing as well as the uh, original sort of bitumen coating that goes on the flat panels on a mini from factory. So I hope you're enjoying the ERA build. We are kind of getting to the point where we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel now and it's it's not going to be long until it's done, although I, I think there's probably still maybe four weeks to go, maybe five weeks. If you're enjoying watching the series, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, then do please consider subscribing. This certainly won't be the last project, there will be more projects to come. I keep getting asked what's the next project after Project Sprout. To be honest guys, I'm, I'm just kind of taking a bit of a breather at the moment. I'm enjoying driving it around. Went out for a lovely 100 mile round trip in it yesterday. It's, it's a real joy to drive. So I'm kind of taking advantage at the moment. There will be another build coming up. And I can't wait, absolutely cannot wait to see the ERA finished and take that for a drive. I'm sure it's going to be phenomenal. Right, I've got the um, downpipe um, from the turbo on with the correct bracket. Um, so now I'm going to put the servo and master cylinder back on. Then connect the brake lines. Um, get the brake pipe circuit filled up um, and fully bled then I can start putting everything back in so yeah let's get on with this eh? So as mentioned in previous episodes the brake pipe circuit on an ERA is different to a standard mini it runs a dual line or dual circuit system so to the standard front brake calipers which are the Metro Turbo brake calipers AP 4 pot it has two brake hoses going to it they actually run two braking circuits so it's called a like I say a, a dual circuit system so that has some redundancy built into it so it takes brake pressure from the front part of the master cylinder and the rear part of the master cylinder so that if one line fails you've always got a backup second line and it's kind of just an added element of safety on all other minis that I can think of it was a single line system so that if the line failed you would just be left with basically one braking circuit working with reduced braking efficiency or effort 
but obviously they built in a bit of extra safety into the ERA. But as we mentioned before, Marks fitted the KAD calipers on the front, which run on a single line circuit. So those lines will be, the secondary lines will be blanked off. So that any, at any point, if anyone wants to revert it back to completely standard, completely original, the four pot AP setup, they can do, and then just connect up the second brake hose to the system. So we've got Lucy helping again, helping bleed the brakes here. There are devices you can get to help you bleed the brakes, like an easy bleed system. Uh, so you can do it one man bleeding. Horses for courses, really. Uh, you can do it manually like this, or you can use an easy bleed system. Sometimes you have to use an easy bleed system and a pressurized bleed because it to, to get air locks out. Down some more. It should start getting hard. So there was questions in the last video about what type of brake fluid to use. So by what type, there are different grades, I guess that you'd call them. So there's dot three, dot four, dot five, and dot 5.1. Unfortunately, they're not all equal and it's a little bit confusing. So dot three, dot four, and dot 5.1 are polyethylene glycol based so you can intermix them I, I wouldn't recommend that to be honest but for instance if you if you've got dot 4 brake fluid in a system and you want to upgrade and start using dot 5.1 there's no need to flush the whole system out you can just add dot 5.1 just bleed it through the whole system it's it's worth replacing it all if you're going to do it anyway uh, and that's not a problem. So dot three, dot four, dot five point one, a polyethylene glycol based. Where it gets a little bit confusing is dot five is silicon based and you cannot mix that with the other types of brake fluid. So three, four and five point one are um, hygroscopic so they absorb water and moisture so they constantly do that so when they talk about the boiling points of brake fluid they'll talk about a dry boiling point and a wet boiling point the wet boiling point is when it's saturated or it's absorbed all the water it can do so the fact that they're hyd hygroscopic um, can be a pain because they attract water and moisture so if you ever leave the cap off it will be attracting moisture so it's don't do that and if you've got old brake fluid laying around in the garage with the cap off and it's been left off for a couple of days just it, it just throw it away get some new stuff because it will absorb the moisture obviously the more moisture that's in the fluid the lower the boiling point because there's water introduced in there so that will lower the boiling point um, and that's where the difference lies really so dot three dot four and dot five point one they all have incrementally higher boiling points so um, obviously if you're driving a car, especially if you're on a track or something like that and the brakes are getting very hot, the last thing in the world you want doing is the brakes to start boiling because that introduces air into the system, the brakes become less efficient, the pedal goes spongy and yeah, you don't get a very good pedal. So <clears throat> where dot five differs, like I said, it's silicon based, so it can't be mixed with anything and it's not hygroscopic, it's completely opposite. It repels water. So if there is any water in the system, with dot five in there, it will just start stay in the system and it will rust out the system. So uh, you need to make sure that the system's got no fluid or, or, or any moisture in it at all. Um, and dot five is really, as I say, silicon paste. It's really sort of reserved for racing cars and track cars and that sort of thing. It actually has a downside as well because the silicon base dot, dot 5 is slightly compressible. It's more compressible than uh, polyethylene glycol. So it actually gives a slightly spongy pedal feel. So anyway, I've waffled on for quite a bit. A <laughs> um, couple of other advantages. So uh, 
dot four is less corrosive than dot three as well dot four is pretty much the standard sort of brake fluid you pick up off the shelf in Halfords now I don't think you can get dot three in many places now uh, and if you've got maybe a track day car or something like that and you don't want to go flushing the whole system converting it over to a silicon based brake fluid then you can just go dot 5.1 which has got the highest boiling points of all the brake fluids and in my mind as well the dot 5 the silicon based stuff is all the components the braking components on a mini weren't designed to be used with silicon based fluid so I'm sure the polyethylene glycol um, fluid actually causes I might have to check this and correct me if I'm wrong but I think it actually causes the seals to swell very slightly which is uh, actually a benefit of using polyethylene glycol and if you've looked at old brake fluid as well it starts to blacken and it starts to go darker the older it gets uh, where it starts to go darker that is the carbon coming out the rubber seals and that's one of the reasons why you change brake fluid on a regular basis typically every two years main reason is because it attracts moisture so the more and more moisture that gets into the brake fluid the lower the boiling point gets um, and as I say last thing you want to happen is the boiling the brake fluid boiling and uh, as I say uh, secondly it just gets dirty it gets carbon uh, in the brake fluid itself so it should be changed every couple of years So Mark probably took a little bit longer than you would do normally uh, bleeding the brakes uh, when it's a completely new build like this and it's all new brake hoses occasionally you get the odd pipe leaking here and there so you need to go over and check for those things and especially on this system where it's got a dual line circuit it, it makes it all the more difficult to bleed because obviously Mark's got one of those lines blanked off so you have to still bleed that system and get the air out because although it's blanked off it is still part of the braking system so any air in there is still be will still be compressible and will cause a spongy pedal if that system not if that line's not bled, bled out fully as well This stage in the build it's hard to see what Mark's doing um, there are lots and lots of little bits and bobs on an ERA it's a very complicated car under the bonnet there I think Mark's just plumbing in the air intake system for the turbo with the air filter in the inner wing 